Grand rising. So as that, uh, as my boss basically told me in his anger for me uh, going ahead and doing what I thought needed to be done to protect the company from certain disaster, from not backing up configs on these critical core network devices. He told me to go to, go down to the work in the financial sector in downtown Chicago. All right? That was a gem of wisdom that I paid close attention to. My ears perked up. Oh, you think I'd have better luck there? Okay. Zero resistance for me. You know, matter of fact, as soon as he said that, I thought to myself, that's a good idea. Thanks. So what I do, I started, uh, I started applying to those types of opportunities. You know, also at that gig, those particular switches that I automated were manufactured by a company called Nortel. Northern Telecom, Canadian company. I mean, a very big, large, well-known manufacturer but of network hardware, but most people think of Cisco and Juniper. They don't really think of Nortel. And Nortel was acquired by Avaya, so we call it Norvaya nowadays. But... Um, It was, it was a nice nice thing to have on my resume because it set me apart from the crowd because most network engineers weren't concerned about it. So it caused my resume to stick out. And then also while at that particular company, I made good friends with, a, with an old timer, a white haired guy, real quirky guy. He didn't really know how he was going to react to anything you said to him. You just had to kind of tread lightly and hope that it would be okay. <laughs> I remember he, uh, a lot of the guys at that company were running Sunboxes, Sun Microsystems, as their desktop machine. He had a Sunbox, and I remember his graphical interface he was running was called window maker if you ever heard a window maker it's like the super old school gui for unix anyway that guy was full of wisdom and he shared some really good stuff with me that was worth its weight in gold still still incredibly value to me valuable to me to this very day and beyond So anyway, you know, I remember, I remember when my uh, headhunters showed up to have a meeting with my boss at that place. They showed up in this yellow Hummer, like a bunch of pimps. <laughs> you know, it's so nice to have recruiting agency help you find gigs when you're out there and you're just, just starting out. You know, for them to match you up with opportunities, it's it's really a nice thing. Um, but in a way, it is kind of like pimping. <laughs> so we kind of joke. But I remember they were, um, when they found out they weren't gonna renew my contract, they looked at me and they, they had this really sad look on their face. Michael, we're really sorry. And um, I looked at him and I said, oh, that's okay. I said, uh, when God closes a door, he opens a window. 
and they looked at me like I was completely nuts, you know? <laughs> I'll never forget the look on their face. They drove off on their yellow Hummer. There's like three of them. Really nice guys. Anyway, so then I went and I interviewed at this uh, very well-known multinational financial corporation. And because of that Nortel experience, almost, almost right there on the spot, they gave it to me. So it was amazing how, you know, I was seemingly being redirected, or excuse me, I was seemingly being rejected, but the reality was I was being redirected to something much greater. A pattern that continued on and on throughout my life. So as I started working at the new place, of course, I was eager to impress, you know, because I had just been dealt a bad hand. So I thought, you know, now's my opportunity to start fresh and turn it around and do something really great. You know, put that, that rejection, put that fire under me that, you know, now I had, now I really wanted to prove myself, not really to them, but to myself. And um, of course, you know, anything else is just a natural consequence of that. So I started automating my, my various procedures and routines there. And I remember, um, I remember my boss at that place, super nice guy. Uh, one morning after we did a, uh, a, a switch migration, he said, Michael, um, don't forget to open up a ticket to have them update the DNS record for that new switch to the new host name. So I opened the ticket, build it out, hit submit, and then we did it again, you know, the next day or the next week. And he said the same thing. Hey, Michael, don't forget to do this. And I thought, you know, this is really tedious, doing this once. I'm just going to do it all in one shot, right? So I thought, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the entire DNS zone file rather than just doing this one-off, onesie z piecemeal. I'm just gonna brute force the whole thing and knock it all out in one shot. So I did a host minus L command on the zone, the DNS zone, which allowed me to do a zone transfer. So I had the whole zone file and I discovered that every one of these switches had like five DNS records attached to it. Probably going back, you know, to the days of token ring because on the previous refreshes, whoever did them, they would just add new. They would never clean up the old. And that's true, you know, pretty much no matter where you go. I mean, DNS is usually just a bunch of garbage. Nobody ever audits it because it's a tedious, it's a tedious thing to audit. You know, it's a ton of text, you know, and you don't want to cause a problem, right? I mean, think about it from the employee's perspective. What reward as an employee would you really get if you actually did that work? And if you, if you cause one little problem, you could lose your job. So what motivation is there to actually do it correctly? There's like every motivation to just kick that can down the road and let somebody else deal with it, you know? And sadly, it's that type of mindset that how mo most corporations operate you know, and that's unnecessary complexity is the enemy of good security protocols. That's the world we're living in. So uh, a lot of companies have a long way to go in terms of their network core network infrastructure before they're even in a place where they could actually leverage the power of an AI agent. There's tons of grunt work ugly disgusting grunt work that is next to impossible to do with human hands people just don't want to do too risky 
no reward, no appreciation, you know, and all this stuff kind of persists and it sits out there just waiting to be discovered by, you know, hopefully not some random guy on the internet doing a little research in his spare time on your corporate network. Those people exist, you know, they're out there. Anyway, guys, really appreciate it if you could vote for me for the Entrepreneurs of Impact. There'll be a link in the comments. It's a free vote. Really help us to uh, share some of our auto magic with the world. There's a lot of companies out there that could really benefit from what we're doing. And the services that they provide will continue to benefit their customers in secure, redundant ways. Have a beautiful day.